confined on the microbe that allows it to uh, attach to specific host tissues. All right, so an example would be Neisseria gonorrhea. So, so what kind of disease is this cause? It's an STD. Gonorrhea is another STD. Okay. We'll talk about that later on. What happens in this disease during the disease course, in order to infect um, the reproductive organs, the urinary tract, uh, it needs to adhere to the host surface. And so it has special adhesions on the fibrioi of the bacteria. Okay. Right, so what do fibrioi look like? Does anybody remember? Yeah, the little hairs, short hairs, okay? So the micro has short hairs, and those attach to the, those attach to the uh, urinary tract, okay? And that's how it, that's how it can invade the reproductive system. All right, any questions about this? All right, some other things that come into play are, so, so one thing that a micro, uh, a microbial infection has to overcome are the host defenses. We learned in the last thing that phagocytes are important for this. So some microbes can produce antiphagocytic factors. So these are these are factors that would either um, inhibit or outright kill the phagocytes. We learned about one of them. It's called a capsule. Okay, so a capsule surrounds the bacteria, prevents the Phagocyte from doing phagocytosis. There are some microbes that can produce chemicals such as leucocytin, which will directly destroy the phagocytes. Right? These include neutrophils and leucocytes. So they actually can um, produce toxins to the leucocytes, to the phagocytes. Okay. Uh, so another, another example of how a microbe can spread is that they can produce certain enzymes. Right, so here's a situation where you have these microbes, in this case bacteria, you want them to, to spread, or the microbe wants to go to spread, and so it can produce enzymes that can help break its way through the tissue so that it can spread. So one example would be hyaluronidase, which breaks down the hyaluronic acid in the connective tissue. Collagenase is another example, breaks down the collagen in the connective tissue. So in both cases, you can see how these enzymes will break down the connective tissue so that the microbes can get through. Okay. Another enzyme is called coagulase. This creates blood clots. It creates blood clots. And so by creating this blood clot around the bacteria, it acts like a protective wall to protect those bacteria from the host defenses. And bacteria can produce another enzyme called the kinase to be able to reversibly break apart that clot and now it can spread. Okay, so, so some bacteria have that trick up their sleeve to be able to employ upon a host in order to evade the host defenses. Okay? Any questions about this? Right. Um, there are toxins. Some bacteria produce toxins. We learned about one called endotoxins. These are produced by gram negative bacteria. Okay. Um, remember that those are attached to the outer portion of the cell wall. There's another type of toxin called exotoxin. So these are produced by the bacteria and then they're released into the surroundings, right? So we have two of them, exotoxins and endotoxins, okay? When we look at some food illness, some food diseases, like food poisoning, right? There's a reason why it's called food poisoning is that what makes you sick is actually a toxin that the bacteria produce, okay? So that's, that's an example of an exotoxin. Any questions about this? So remember, exo means it goes out. So in this case, the toxin gets produced by the bacteria and is deliberately released into the environment, in, into the body. Okay. Endo means in, so that's actually attached to the bacteria. And then during the life of the bacteria, it just gets shed off uh, from where it's there. All right, so again, to remind you about endotoxin, endotoxin, 
what we call the saccharide is the molecule that makes up the makes up the toxin, causes a fetal response, causes septic shock. Okay. You get an increase in the permeability of the blood capillaries, which results in a blood, drop in blood pressure. All right, so that's what often um, drives people into shock. Is that, is that sudden lowering of the blood pressure? Also, another thing to be aware of that endotoxins are heat stable, so they're not. You can't get rid of them bionically. Okay, so when they're if they are contaminated, especially in medicines like injectable medicines, that's a big problem because you can't, it's very hard to get rid of them. Okay. Any questions about this? All right. Um, so what we're going to get into next. I mentioned that we're going to be looking at diseases in populations, so this gets more into that. Um, this is uh, this field of study when we look at diseases in populations. It's called epidemiology. Epidemiology. So this refers to how a disease spreads, how we control it, uh, how it's transmitted, right? And we're looking at how we prevent it in the context. Of Population, right? So here's an example of what we mean by how we can study the disease population. So here's a plot, a graph, where we look at um, at uh, how a disease, number of cases of disease in a population, and we're particularly interested in how many people die from this population. So um, this number here indicates the percent of percent of people who have the disease, how much percent of them actually die from the disease? Okay. Um, so the segment of the population that has a disease. This is the, these are the years. So 92, 93, 94, 95. Okay. Um, and what we have here is uh, a graph of the percent of deaths over the course of the disease through various years, through, the, through these years in the 90s. Okay. Um, so a couple things we can get from this. First of all, what do you notice about the pattern of deaths? Does it go up? Does it go down? It goes up and down. Okay. So when does it go, what does it tend to go up? So remember, you know, this, this marks the year. So, so right here is where, right. So right here is near the beginning of the year. So when does it happen? Yeah, near the beginning of the year, right? You kind of see it around the peak. It peaks near the beginning of the year. Okay. Why would it peak near the beginning of the year? It's after the holidays. After the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that, you're ready to down. die. You <laughs> see our right. bills. <laughs> all right, so yeah, all right. So, so any guesses of what kind of disease you're looking at? What kind of disease will peak near the beginning of the year? Oh, blue. Blue, 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 yes, blue. yeah. So this is, so so during the beginning of the year, what, so why would, why would you expect something like the flu to be more prevalent during the beginning of the year, during this time of the year? You're trapped inside. Yeah, you're trapped inside, right? It's colder, so we're all kind of confined. Okay, so it's more easy. It's, it's uh, easier for that disease to spread. Okay, so we're, we're actually looking at we're actually looking at, at death statistics for the flu. Okay, so this would be a certain percentage of flu cases. I think these are like hospitalized flu cases. Okay. All right. Now, some other things here. There is this. There are these green and blue lines. So this represents the average. All right. So this is what we expect to be the average. So you see that smooth pattern there. Right. So when you see something like this, what does that tell you? What happened this particular year? Huh? Yeah, epidemic or an outbreak. Okay. So for some reason there was a there was more deaths this year than usual. Okay. Um, one thing that we'll learn is that the flu virus can change over time. Right. That's why every year we often have to change the mixture of flu viruses that you get protected against in the flu vaccine, okay? 
And so uh, in this particular year, this is where the, there was something different about that particular flu virus strain or strains, and that's what uh, that's what made those people that's what, that's what produced the higher than usual deaths. Okay. All right. Any questions about this? This is what we're trying to, this is what we're trying to investigate in this um, in this chapter. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to we're going to leave it here. We'll we'll uh, we'll uh, pick this up next week, I guess. So we're going to get ready for lab now. So when you get back, we'll start lab. Make sure you turn in your stuff. Okay. Especially 